What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan. I am here today to look ahead to the PFL Europe 4 2023 finales going down in my home country of Ireland up in the Tree Arena in Dublin. And it's uh, a very, 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 very good card. December 8th, uh, this fight is going down on. And I'll be honest, I've, I've covered all these cards this year. And from the very, very start, I was really impressed with the level of fighter that the PFL were able to pick up and very impressed with the level of fights that have actually had this year. Um, I will probably do a, a recap of the whole season when it, when it's over. Uh, I did a, a lot of them last year and maybe there's a one for PFL Europe itself because I, I was actually shocked by the level. Like when I heard about PFL Europe... I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe there's going to be a, a few good fighters and then they're going to kind of pack it, you know, and let, let's say let's say you sign Franz Malambo, right, who we'll be talking about in a few minutes. And he's, you know, a known guy who's, you know, 20 fights into his career. And he's like, Franz is good enough to fight in a tournament. Now, OK, at Bantamweight, we can, we can discuss the weight classes after and stuff. But like, you know. Maybe he'll train one or two good fighters in with him, but you know it'll be made for him. But that's not the case at all. This is made for no one. Now, maybe you could say the Java, someone, and Simon Powell, but those are divisions that don't have a whole load of good fighters. But the, the likes of the lightweights, the likes of the bantamweights, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt, that has happened, and I am wholly impressed. And you know what? I'm looking forward to the finale, but I'm also looking forward to next year and, and coming years to see where this goes. To, and also to see um, if, you know, if there is a, a, I suppose, fan base that develops out of this. Like, who's going to be the European champion? Who's going to be the best guy here? And like, I, I, I like, I like that. You know, I've, I've never been like for one for all the European belts or anything like that. But when it's something like this, when you know you're guaranteed to get a good fight and then another good fight and then a third good fight and you'll win, you know, the hundred grand at the end of it. And then, you know what, you have a massive chance either maybe, you know, go back and do it again if, if that's what you uh, what you want to do or go into the PFL season or, you know, maybe now Bellator as, as we know and, and go that way. But I, I, it's a great opportunity, I think, for for some of these guys. And even, like, let's say the people who don't win or anything. It's great experience. Maybe they can go in, they could sign for somewhere else and build their way back up or whatever it might be. It's been a win-win. Because it's like, it's it's been a real... Uh, you know, sometimes we, we say, oh, it's, it's, it's tough for the up-and-coming fighters. But it's been a real great time, I suppose, over the last, how many, six or seven years for European MMA fighters. There's been so many different places and so many people have popped up. Like obviously PFL Europe has only popped up this uh, you know in in the in the last while. We've had Octagon popping up. Obviously Cage has been there for years and years and years and you know Bama was there before it who kind of you know Bama turned into Bellator and you know all the, the Bama fighters didn't win to Bellator and then Bellator did really good stuff. It's been a fantastic time really. If if, if the, the amount of opportunities, the amount of different fights that have been available uh, to the Irish and the UK and the European fighters has been absolutely brilliant. And you know what? It's getting tougher and tougher for everyone to actually get the best fighters uh, in their promotion, but it's also making it a little bit easier because there's people who... So, so there's people maybe in, in this tournament who might fight at the weekend and maybe the PFL don't sign them. And then they go to Cage Warriors or they go somewhere else and then, you know, Cage Warriors know how good they are. Or someone from Cage Warriors signs with PFL Europe and PFL Europe know how good they are because they've had the opportunity in Cage Warriors or they've had the opportunity in KSW as well. I one I didn't mention, I, I definitely should have. Or Octagon or wherever it might be. It's uh, it's a wonderful time for European MMA, and you know I've been obviously covering all the Cagers cards this year, all of the PFL Europe cards, uh, and all of that. Uh, so I feel like I'm in a good place to talk about it, and it's it's very interesting because I feel like everywhere is almost in uh, a building stage. If obviously if you're PFL with the the new series, or a rebuilding stage, uh, if you're said likes of Cagers who had a lot of champions, but lot, the likes of Kellen Lochran, the likes of uh, Reese McKee, even Ian, going back to Ian Gary and Paddy Pimblet, the champions and stars over the last while that they've I suppose had to uh, had to replace and they're building back up now and they're absolutely doing that. Whereas at the same time, PFL have built into this crescendo and they'll build into a crescendo again next year. And where will those fighters go um, after that? In terms of the, the winners, they could go to the very, very top of PFL, of Bellator. 
very, very interesting times and very, very fun times. To be a fighter, like, it must be great. I spoke to Nathan Kelly the other day, and, you know, I, I don't know if it was at, on the interview or, 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 or after. I think it was, it was during the interview. He's basically kind of saying, like, you know, I, I don't need to rush into anything here. I can I ha, I know there's opportunities in front of me. I know there's opportunities coming. I can you know I'm eight fights into my career and we'll get the net in here to, to start things off. Sorry, ten fights into my career, eight wins into my career. You know, there's nothing to rush. Let's get two or three more wins, let's get four or five more wins, and then we'll start going to a place where I'm at my best and I want to take on the best. And that's smart and that's intelligent and that's do you know what it is? It's something that wasn't always available. You know, you got the eight fights. Maybe, you know, you were six and two or you're seven, one or eight. No, and you're thinking UFC, you're thinking title, you're thinking go here and get this right now. I need to do it or else it's, you know, it's going to fall away from me. But that's not necessarily the case anymore. And that's good for everyone. And you know what that leads to? It leads to better fighters. And what we have here is some very, very, very good fighters. Um, you could argue the best of which is Nathan Gelly in the main event. And let's talk about that fight first against uh, Dimitri uh, uh, Solomis. Um, I, I, as I said, I spoke to Nathan and I told, I, we were speaking about Dimitri and uh, I saw the lack of tape on him. There isn't really much out there. But for what I did see of him, the bits and pieces that are there and looking at his record here in Shardog, you know, he has four wins. Uh, sorry, six wins, four wins by by knockout. He is a guy who you know who seems to get those big knockouts and land those big shots. You know, um, I, I think there's some some telling as well that of those four, three of them have been third round knockouts. So there's something to that as well. I think you can take from that without being able to see a whole load of his uh, of tape on him, but there, I think there's probably something you can take from that. Now, there is a whole load of tape uh, on Nathan Kelly. There's no uh, doubt about that. He's fought in Bellator, even I think uh, the um, the Clan Wars fights are even up on YouTube, and obviously the PFL fights are, are up there as well. Um, and he's a guy, for me, that... If you were to ask me who's the most improved Irish MMA fighter over the last, let's let's look at the record here, two years, I, I would say Nathan Kelly. It's it's hard to say anyone but Nathan Kelly. Now there's been some great performances and, you know, obviously Ian Gary's up there as well, but Ian, I think, was at a very good base two years ago and has improved from it. But I think, and I, I said this to Nathan in the interview, I was like, there was a time, you know, when he signed for Bellator and he was only there for one fight, but it felt like there was something different in that preparation that turned him from a fighter who was, you know, losing his first two fights of his career to, you know, getting a few wins on, on the local scene to getting signed for Bellator at 3-2 and two, to now be an 8-2 and two fighter. That, that takes a level of mental fortitude that I think people don't realise um, is, is so big. And uh, to be 0-2... But then not not to just be on two, right? To then be one and two, to then be two and two, to then be three and two. It's not easy. Like, it's not easy, first of all, to get opportunities. It's not easy to get people to fight you. It's not easy to get an opportunity like in Bellator, like you did at three and two, and then to go on and get the future opportunities he's had done in PFL. You know, this is, is going to be his fourth fight in PFL. No, it's not. It's absolutely not easy to do that at all, and he has done it. And along with that, he's made big improvements. Now he changed weight classes. As he spoke about changed his diet massively as well, which I thought was a very interesting part of that interview. And if you haven't uh, watched it, please check out that interview because he's just seems like a really good, nice guy as well, and a great representative of, of Irish MMA, but uh, MMA uh, itself as well. And. Um, you know, the, those improvements have been big, though. Like the wrestling, hes I, I believe he's the youngest uh, Irish BJJ black belt ever, uh, and he's really good on the ground. Like that fight um, against, uh, was, it, was it the Zachary Hicks fight or the Ben Ellis fight? Oh, I was going to mix it. It was the Zachary Hicks fight, where he literally went in there and didn't get hit. Literally went in, took him down, choked him out two and a half minutes Thanks very much. Like, literally, literally did, <laughs> didn't get touched in the fight. He, he was the only one. Like, Zachary Hicks, Hicks had hands put on him, but Nathan uh, Kelly had no hands put on him. What a performance. Absolutely brilliant. And that's the sort of level that he can get there. You know, in his fight after that, it was a bit of a bit of rock'em sock'em, but there's no harm in that either, getting a bit of... Uh, uh, getting a bit of experience into you and getting 15 minutes into the legs. Very, very, very good. Um, you would expect Nathan Kelly here to work that again you know work that takedown 
tr- uh, arm triangle, rear naked truck, <laughs> back, back, whatever it might be, and get him out of there. That's what you would be expecting from him. Now, maybe he'll turn into a striking match, maybe fantasy, maybe he's seen a little bored of me, but like, if you look at Dimitri's record as well, three losses, two of them by submission. That'll probably tell you something as well. That'll probably tell Nathan Kelly something as well, that there's probably, um, <laughs> you know, there's probably a way to get him out of there with submissions. Now, you're the main event as well. Imagine that. You take take him down, put him in that rear neck joke. Imagine that crowd in Dublin. That's going to be unbelievable. And he's a dub as well. You know, there's not man, that many dubs on the card, um, but he is one of them. And that could be absolutely massive and it could be star making. And I'm sure, you know, with the, the PFL regular season over and not in schedule yet, I'm sure the likes of Don Davis and Peter Murray and Ray Seffo and all those people will be watching this and we'll be looking out and imagine in the main event, you get a big finish, you know. And I know for a fact, because I've talked to people in PFL and they've told me they're very big on Nathan Kelly and um, it, will, it, it could be an absolutely massive event. My pick is Nathan Kelly. And look, there's going to be a bit of bias here in this one, but not not too much bias. I I I, uh, I really like some of these fights, but in this one, I think Nathan Kelly is going to be a big favorite, and I think he will win there. While we're talking about Nathan Kelly, Nathan Kelly closes the card, but Nathan Kelly also opens the card. Uh, people remember Nate the Great Kelly. He's uh, fighting in an amateur fight here against Callum Seaton. Um, you know. And I, I look, this is an amateur fight, so I, I don't want to put too much pressure on him or talk too much about this fight, in fact, because of it being an amateur fight. And, you know, there's also an argument to say, like, should amateurs even be fighting uh, on this sort of scene in the tree arena? Like, should amateurs actually be fighting on, you know, the, the local shows or going to the IMAPs or whatever might be and getting the experience there? And then when they're ready to go pro... You know, even then is it right to have them on this sort of card and things. And, you know, maybe it's for the, the 4 and 0, 5 and 0, 6 and 0, 10 and 0 sort of pros to be on the card rather than the early pros or the amateurs even to be on this. But that's, I suppose, an argument for another day. And, like, not just the PFL argument, but we've seen it, you know, in uh, in other places as well. And uh, PFL don't make a habit of it, so I'm not... Um, I'm not, I'm not really criticising him or anything, but there's no doubt about it, like Nathan Kelly, Nate Kelly, we'll go with Nate Kelly, he's, you know, he's going to sell tickets, uh, I know himself and his mum are like uh, involved in, in the gym as well with, with SPG and, you know, he's a known guy, so I'm sure people will come and see Nate the great fight and we, we saw him on the microphone, you know, years and years ago and um, it'll, it's very interesting, you know, he's been training the whole time since and doing jiu-jitsu tournaments and kickboxing tournaments and, and bits and pieces of, of MMA as well and the juniors and all that. So, um, as I said, a big opportunity for him and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, old Nate the Great and uh, make, his, uh, make his debut, I suppose, on, on the big scene in that one. Um, then we have, after that, the four title fights. So we have light heavyweight, flyweight, lightweight, and bantamweight. And I think Man of Heaven for PFL Europe... We have um, two Irish guys in those four fights and one Irish trained woman as well. So it's brilliant. Like at the start of the season, you're looking at them and go, oh, there's a lot of tough fights here for the likes of Franz, the likes of John Mitchell and, and others as well. Like will they, you know, there's no guarantee they'll get to the finale. Like as I mentioned earlier, it's, uh, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't just layups for these guys, but they've won some close fights in, in some cases and some, you know, put on some great performances and others to get there. And uh, that's what we have. The, the top of those fights, in my opinion, is Franz Malambo against Kurshed Kakarov. Two really, really, really good fighters. Um, you, you look at their records, you know, 11-1 and one for uh, Kakarov fighting out of Tajikistan, which has become a real hotbed for MMA. You see people popping up in the UFC in different places uh, coming out of Tajikistan over the last while. He's 31 years of age now. You know, he's won, uh, won three in a row after losing to Beth Johns and Bellator. But that Ali Taleb win last time out, that was fantastic. The first time I watched tape on Ali Taleb, I was like, well, that's the guy who's going to win this tournament. Like, there's no doubt uh, about that. Uh, but he he beat him easily. Like, he that he beat him on the feet. And, uh, you know, it was it was a really, really, really good performance. You know, he's a guy who fought, you know, Stephen Burridge back in 2019. He's, you know, fought a couple of amateur fights as well, all the way back in 2017 to add to his, uh, his pros. This guy is uh, a really, really, really good fighter. Um, he fights... I, I would say he fights at, at the kind of the regular MMA distance, but he pops in very well. And... Very good one-twos, technical, um, takes his time, 
but sometimes he gets excited sometimes he he rushes in um oh, there's bits and pieces on him out there that maybe saying that the offensive wrestling is really good with him and maybe the defensive wrestling is is possibly a bit of an issue but against Franz Malambo I don't know if that's going to be the case here because Franz Franz just wants to strike with you and he's such a good striker who could blame him you know 32 years of age Franz is now against the 31 year old uh, uh, Kakarov you know Franz is 15 and 5 but you know you look at those losses like the Ricky Bandez loss he was winning that fight and that's the only time he's lost since 2018 you know he, they, he went to Brave and they threw him in there twice with Stephen Lawman you know early in his career which to me was, was ridiculous matchmaking but look he's come through it and he's had some run over the last while, you know. Unfortunately, he was out for a couple of years after getting into the Combatches Global uh, tournament where he won three fights uh, on the one night and won that tournament and looked fantastic in that. Looked, look, it was a split decision last time out. Didn't look, uh, I'm uh, sorry, the, the first time back out and he looked rusty. Last time out, again, it was short notice, I believe, against Mokhtar Banashi. Um, it was a better performance and one that you can say okay that was in September we're in December now he's what two three months to prepare for that for the next fight ideal you know you have those two fights in in the space of three or four months you know you have a couple of months to prepare look what you did there you're back you're back in it and I think both guys are in perfect uh you know Fettle, I suppose, to fight in this fight, and it's going to be fun for Franz. In the other side of it, what's Franz good at? Like Franz has such a good long jab, good combination striker. He has power. You know, you you look at his record, and he doesn't have a whole load of knockouts. But you see him then, and there, you know, he is a more powerful guy. He still he can finish guys. He has submissions in there as well. You know, he's finished more than half of his fights between submissions and knockouts. Um. I think for Franz, though, if he is to win this fight, I do think he needs to change things up. Like, Kakarov will be coming at him with those big, powerful shots, with that one-two down through the middle. And, you know, even if his shots uh, aren't as powerful, I think they'll probably look more powerful. So Franz is going to have to find ways, you know. Whether it's, you know, I talked about Kakarov, whether it's a takedown, whether it's pushing him against the cage, landing a few knees inside, landing a few elbows inside, like France has really good elbows, really good inside game as well, you know. And But you have to be the master of that. If Franz finds himself pushed up against the cage, that's not where he wants to be because that's where Franz struggles the most. You know, we all, you know, my colleague over in the Severe my podcast, Graham, always gives out him for a good jumping on guillotines uh, and things like that. Um, now, he's he's finished a couple of them, no doubt about it, but I don't think it's the wisest move uh, in the world. Now, if Kakarov puts himself in the place, look, to go for it, go for it. But I, I think Franz, if he can turn this into a technical boxing match, or a technical striker match where there's no wrestling, he can absolutely win that fight. If it turns into more of a, uh, not even necessarily a brawl, but like an exchanging of of power, I think Kakarov may have the uh, the advantage there. I I just I find this fight very 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 interesting. I I wonder if Franz, I, I I'll put it to you this way. I think if Franz has prepared and is at his very best, there is a high chance for him to win this fight. If he isn't, I think Kakarov will definitely win because he is so good in all areas. You cannot, you cannot be off a little bit. Like these, and, and I put it the other way around as well. If Kakarov is off a little bit, Franz is good enough to beat him. You know, people like looking for my picks. I don't know who to pick in this one. And there's, honestly, there's a few fights like that. I'm going for Nathan Kelly in the main event in this one. Can I sit in the fence? <laughs> I really don't want to give my pick for this one. I don't know who's going to win it. Um, I, I, I really do. I, 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 I'll throw my bit of bias in there, but I really do believe in Franz Malambo, right? I really believe in his ability. I really do. Now, do you know who else I believe in? I believe in Ali Taleb as well. I honestly thought Ali Taleb was one of the top prospects in the world, and Kakarov went in and beat him. <coughs> so there's no doubt about it. He can, he can win. They can both win. Who will win? Friends. Go on. <laughs> friends. Friends is my big. I'm going to go for friends. Okay. There you go. Uh, right. That is the Bantamweight title fight. Let's talk about the lightweight title fight. And this is, again, a very interesting fight. Uh, Jacob Kazuba uh, against John Mitchell from uh, from Cork here uh, in Ireland. Um, you know, I, I, I you look at a guy 
like John Mitchell and you think <coughs> ain't, ain't one now in his career he's gone out I think he's in well is it he's in the Middle East anyway somewhere training and you kind of just think to yourself a guy like that has changed up his whole life to go out there and prepare and he's like like literally when I say his whole life his whole life is preparation for MMA you know and that's not always the case with you know with, not just with MMA fighters but with, with any sort of sport that you will give that much to your sport uh but he does you know he absolutely does and it just it can take you I think to that next level and over the last while you look at John Mitchell's game and he got a, he got a loss in 2022 and he got guillotined and it was one of those ones where and it was in UAE Warriors after he'd won his last two fights in UAE Warriors you know after going over there and all of that and you're kind of thinking like oh god is this could this be a turning point for him and it was but a positive turning point he's won four fights since won three fights in 2023 he went out to India I think even for one fight he won a fight in 2022 as well and he's looked so good, like, uh, he had to go in and eat the rematch, the guy he fought two fights ago because of, you know, I think, what, his opponent missed weight or something, um, and he's looked so good, like, he's got a couple of knockouts, it's funny, I remember one, one of the Irish people here talking about him after uh, his knockout, I believe, over in uh, in India, and they were kind of like, people are going to be looking at John Mitchell now and thinking he's a knockout artist, but this guy is really, you know, <laughs> very good on the ground, good submissions and all that, so that's good if you're John Mitchell, you're, you're well-rounded, you can fight in all areas. Um, Kazub, on the other hand, then... Um, He's such a good striker and a good wrestler. He is absolutely fantastic on top, uh, good against the cage. You know, as I said, undefeated now, uh, fighting out of uh, out of Jacksonville in, in the uh, in the US of A. You know, he beat Dylan Chug last time out. You know, and we'll, we'll talk about Dylan in his next fight. But Radu Maxim in the fight before that is a very good fighter. But he all, uh, you know, he's. You know, he's a guy who's been around now since 2017. Okay, he's only 10 fights, but he had a lot of amateur fights as well. And I think you look at a guy like that, who is such a finisher as well, 60% of his fights have been finished, and he's going to be a tough out for anyone, right? You look at Mitchell, and you think he's going to be a tough out for anyone. I I, I think this fight is decided in two ways. I think if someone can get a wrestling advantage, they'll win the fight, right? So it could just be one way. And the second way is I think I think Azuba is going to be trying to make it into more of a striking matchup and avoiding Mitchell's power. So if Mitchell can land that power, he has a great chance. Obviously, if Kazuba can land his power. He also has a great chance. But here, here's my, oh, how's it going to be decided in two ways? Wrestling and striking. Oh, yeah. Fair play. <laughs> wow, what a breakdown. Give us another genius breakdown here. But you know what I mean? I, I hope people know what I mean. Like, I think, I think the wrestling, number one, as always, is going to be a big deciding factor here. Like, first of all, like, will someone engage in the wrestling is the key. Uh, who is more likely to engage in the wrestling? You'd almost think it might be Kazuba, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're you know looking too much into a few of the, the, the recent knockouts of Mitchell. Maybe he will. And I actually, do you know what? I have a feeling he actually will. Um, and I, he'll res- he'll have a lot of respect for Kazuba. But do you know what we're going to get here, right? And to 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 kind of pussyfoot around what we're actually going to get. Do you know what? we're we're just going to get a battle in all areas. There's going to be wrestling battles. There's going to be striking battles. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I do think um, the technical prowess of Kazuba, and maybe I was kind of talking like Mitchell had a power uh, advantage there. I'm not sure that's the case. Like Kazuba, it's very hard as well. I think that might be just the difference. Um, I think I picked against Mitchell in a recent fight as well, and I was wrong. So I might be wrong against this time. So I'm going to go for Kazuba in that one as my pick. Um the next two picks, I think, are, are, are a tad easier with, with uh, no disrespect to either of the opponents, but Dakota Cheva against uh, Valentina Scatizzi. Um Look, Cheva has been a real star in this scene for a good while. She's been a real star for PFL since they signed her, and she is 
Very good. Tall, rangy, switch stance fighter. Kicks all the time. Very accurate st- uh, strikes. Getting better with her combos as well. She's very good in the clinch. Um, I believe she's training out in the ATT now as well. And you can see the nasty ground game that she has. She just seems to be a level above a lot of the contenders in this division. She also has good take down defense. Good cardio. Power. And... Uh, the last thing I've written in my notes here is no known weaknesses. And when you know, when you write that, you know someone is very good. Uh, Skatezi, on the other hand, then, you know, she's only, what, three fights into her career, is that right? Yeah. Very hard to, to tell, like, the level or the ceiling she has. She's very aggressive, very strong. Um, there's very little striking on tape with her. Um, good takedowns, good ground and pound. Um, and, well, I suppose until maybe maybe the last fight against Elise Jevers. Um I, look, it's going to be a very tough fight for Skitizi, but if you hear people in SPG talking, you hear um, uh, the likes of Danny McCormack talking about training with her, There's a lot of people are very high on Skitizi, so she might put up a more of a battle here against the Cheva maybe than people are realising, but the Cheva has just looked so good. It's hard to believe anyone uh, at this level or maybe even a level or two above this level uh, are going to beat her. Like, the best fight uh, I think she's had so far is in the amateurs against Shauna Bannon. If you haven't seen that, it's on YouTube. Absolutely fantastic fight. And I think, you know, maybe people underestimate Shauna Bannon as well. You'll see how good she is in that fight. She could have arguably won it. You know, she, she ended up losing the decision, but a very, very close fight. That one, a really good fight. Um... But I gave you the breakdown of the, the Cheva there. And look, if she t- stops the takedown, uses that jab, uses her height, um, you know, it's five foot four versus five foot eight. I, I think she can control the fight that way. And I do think she will she will win it. And uh, I think it'll be big for PFL because I think she is uh, a, a possible future star, 25 years of age as well. Massive horrible for Skitizi. You beat the Cheva and you make her whole career. So a massive fight for her there as well. And I think Simeon Paul is in a very similar position to the Cheva. Now, the matchup for him is is a very, very uh, interesting one, and uh, you know, a more difficult one. Maybe he's faced so far. He's fighting Jacob, and, uh, uh, Jacob Indo, even who's very aggressive. He kind of head down and throws, rushes you into the clinch, lands knees inside. He's got big takedowns, aggressive on the floor. Um, again, like aggressive on the floor and on the feed, but a very good jab. And when he takes his time, he's a very, very good fighter. So powerful as well. Simeon Paladin, great outside striker with pressure. Very long reach, very good footwork. Good takedown defense. But we see it because everyone is trying to take him down. Um, the place he has struggled, I think, and he's... I, I wouldn't be surprised if he has this... I, I don't know what I call it a weakness, but area maybe um, fixed. But body locks. He's Every time he's been taken down, it's in a body lock. Um, and in though kind of the, the maybe the more squat, smaller, stronger guy, I'm sure he'll be looking for that. Um, he's very good cardio, though, to Simeon Powell. But his best trade, I've said this in a preview show before, is his belief. Like, he's you know now never beaten is the wrong way to put it but like if a guy takes him down if someone hits him hard if someone you know shows up something he's trying to do he'll still believe he'll still do it he'll still go for it he'll still replicate what made him good and that's the biggest part for him now this in my opinion is is the toughest matchup uh, of his career um you know um uh, Indo has been in there with the likes of Antonio Salomone, who's uh, a, a good, you know, guy who's been around for a long time and will put it, put it, put it, in, put it on you, you know. Um, and I think this is a massive step up for Paul. Do I think he's ready for it? Absolutely. And I think he'll probably get the finish. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And he's definitely uh, a massive star there. Um, so yeah, those are the. F- the, that's the main event the four title fights let me just touch on another couple of fights as well uh, on this uh, I mentioned Dylan Tuke earlier on he's fighting um, Yazid Hussein um, who is I watched a couple of his fights very kind of aggressive a uh, guy who tries to wrestle or tries to create scrambles uh, but like a smaller squat type of fighter uh, for the division now you know Dylan Tuke is coming up 
So, you know, um, you know, maybe he's not going to look as small in squad against Dylan Duke. In fact, Sherdog.com tells me he's, in fact, taller than Dylan Duke. So maybe that's not going to be the case in this fight, but was in, in previous fights. Um, but Dylan has been wrestling really well uh, in his last few fights. You know, he was in there with Kazuba, would beat Connor Hughes before that, who's also on this card. Um, and I think if he can beat Yazid to that, re- to the wrestling game, I'll say it again, uh, like the previous fight, I think he'll win the fight, and I do think he'll win the fight. I think um, Yazid has fought, the, the level he's fought, I don't think is as high as the level that Chuk has fought. And now he has some names in there. He fought uh, Eve Landu uh, five or six years ago. Now that was a while ago, but the level since, I don't think has been as high. Um, but it, it all depends on what Dylan Tuke turns up. Like if Dylan is at his best, there are very few people that can beat him. Um, so I'm going to go with Dylan. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that fight as well. Um, interesting fight as well. Um, Lewis McGrillan Evans against Mattis Zorovs. Uh, you know, there's there's some... It's great to see on this card as well. There's a lot of the Irish gyms that are not SPG getting getting their goals. Well. You know, John Mitchell from, from down in Cork. Dylan Chuk used to be SBG, but then he moved to Team KF, and now he's actually over in Scotland. Andreas Binder as well, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, is, is, is another one who's an SBG fighter, Ben Davis as well, I believe. So a very good spread of uh, of Irish fighters from around gyms, which was always a criticism before, but absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, Zarovs is one of them fighting out a Ryushin team as well in uh, in Dublin here. He's won his last two in a row. He fought at that Anthony Pettis card. Um, and, you know, he's only lost two fights in his career, six and two, five knockouts in there. Lewis McGill and Evans, you know, is a really top ra- uh, rated prospect. Uh, he fought twice now in PFL and he's got two finishes in there so not to say that this is kind of a setup fight for him but I think uh, I think they're probably putting him in here but what a, what an opportunity for Matthias as well to go in there if you can if you can beat him you know he can take his place on the way forward as well so very interesting for him fighting on a Manchester top team uh, and I'll probably uh, probably go for McGrill and Evans to, to, to win that one um this Binder versus Skatizi fight, very interesting fight. You know, Skatizi, uh, his sister is on the card, so that's uh, an, another, I suppose, big thing for him. Um, Andreas Binder fighting uh, now for a good while and looking for that opportunity. You know, he's 27 years of age. He's fought an LFL uh, for for a while now, beat Aiden Lee and Chris Stringer there. You know, two guys who've been around a long time. Beat Rasta Mackman, you know, who fought in the UFC before uh, as well. And he's re- as I said, he's really been looking for that opportunity. His claim to fame for a long time is he's the only guy to ever beat Ian Gary. He beat Ian Gary as um, uh, in the amateurs. You know, he also fought and beat Stuart Mulpeter in the amateurs. One of the best amateurs around. He fought John Mitchell as well uh, in the amateurs. So he's fought to a very very good level, and he's a very good fighter. And you know, we've seen his opponent Skitizi. Uh, in Bellator for the last what four or five years, you know the, the level he's been in there as well. He fought Alfie Davis and others, beating Gavin Hughes, beating Brian Hyde, beating Davy Gallon, which to me was uh, a bit of a shock result and a great result for him. So honestly, this is going to be a, a rock'em sock'em robots type of fight, I think, uh, or, or maybe not, maybe not necessarily that, but it's going to be a good fight between two good fighters and uh, a toss of a kind. Uh, in that one, I think it'll all be about like I think Skidizi does what Skidizi does. He goes out and he plays his game. He throws his shots. It's I think it's about Binder kind of can he rise to this level now? Fighting in your, uh, you know the, the biggest arena in Ireland. There's going to be a big home crowd there coming over. I think he's uh, he's from Galway. I think isn't he? So coming over there, I'm sure there will be that pressure. This big opportunity, massive. But Binder has. Um, a very, very, very good game, you know, and if he can rise and he can do it, you know, sky's the limit for him, so a very interesting fight, that one. Then we have Brett Johns and Tom Breeze coming back here with big opportunities for them. Very interesting to see Brett Johns, I suppose, coming over to PFL. He's had a, a, a kind of a torrid time in Bellator with injuries and, you know, you know, being buried on undercards and stuff, but he's fighting uh, David uh, Kral here. Tom Breeze coming back. Uh, against Clayton Pereira da Silva you know Tom Breeze has been fighting in KSW and other places over the last while um, we have the former Cage Warrior champion Dominic Wooding on this as well against Ben Davis you know a few people giving out about that matchup Ben Davis 8-6 and six. Um, 
you know, he's only fought once in the last three years and lost in the first round via knockout. Um, so, yeah, a bit, bit of an odd one having him in there, and especially putting him up against someone uh, as good as Dominic Wooding. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. Anyway, and then we've Conor Hughes against Sebastian Sanaguedes. You know, Hughes, um, a very, very good fighter. Uh, as we mentioned earlier on, he's only losses to Dylan Chuk. He was 7-0 and coming into that. He's been over uh, Irishman Marcin Zimbella as well, who's a very good fighter. And, you know, lots of amateur fights for him as well with some good names uh, in there uh, who he's fought. So uh, a big fight for him. So in uh, in those ones, I'm going to go for uh, the young Nath Kelly. I'll go for Hughes. I'll go for Wooding, Breeze and Johns. So... There are, there are my picks. That is my preview for the PFL European finale. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and we'll see you all next time.